We were always here. We were always here. Welcome to the Aboriginal channel. In this episode, we're going to be reading from the book An Inquiry into the Distinctive Characteristics of the Aboriginal Race of America by Samuel G. Morton. This is the second edition published in 1844. I have taken a glance at what I conceive to be the peculiar traits of the Aboriginal race of America as embraced in five principal considerations. Their organic, moral, and intellectual characters, their mode of internment, and their maritime enterprise. And from these, I have ventured to draw a few definite conclusions. Pause. Now we're going to be talking about the physical characteristics, but at the beginning, I'm going to move over to the maritime enterprise to read a little bit and so we can get an understanding of the wordage before we go to the physical characteristics and put the two and two together. So let's go over here to maritime enterprise one of the most characteristic traits of all civilized and many barbarous communities is the progress of maritime adventure the caucasian nations of every age present a striking illustration of this fact their sails are spread on every ocean and the fabled voyage of the argonauts is but a type of their achievements from remote antiquity to the present time hence their undisputed dominion of the sea and their un and their successful colonization of every quarter of the globe the mongolians and malays though active and predatory and proverbially aquatic in their habits are deficient in that mechanical invention which depends on a knowledge of mathematical principles while they seem also incapable of these mental combinations which are requisite to a perfect acquaintance with natal, naval tactics. The Negro, whose observant and imitative powers enable him to acquire with ease the details of seamanship, readily becomes a mariner, but rarely a commander, and history is silent on the nautical prowess of his race. Far behind all these is the man of America, savage or civilized the sea for him has had few charms and his navigation has been almost exclusively restricted to lakes and rivers pause so right there we're talking about the caucasian and what he does they say he has dominion over the seas he's the best at the sea that's what that said this says the mongolians weren't too good at it <laughs> they lacked the you know the mechanical invention the Negro was very good at his observant and imitative powers, and he was able to get by on the sea just as well. But the man of America is strictly a lake and river a kind of a people. So right there, it's, we're seeing a separation between the Negro, which obviously they're talking about the blacks in Africa. So... And then the man of America uh, basically is separate from that Negro, right? So let's go back here in the physical characteristics and read a little bit. It cannot be questioned that physical diversities do occur, equally singular and inexplicable, as seen in different shades of color, varying from a fair tint to a complexion almost black. And this too under circumstances in which climate can have little or no influence. So also in reference to stature, the differences are remarkable in entire tribes, which moreover are geographically proximate to each other. These facts, however, are mere exceptions to a general rule and do not alter the peculiar physiognomy of the Indian, which is as undeviatingly characteristic as that of the Negro. Pause. Okay. So we just read where as far as maritime enterprise is concerned, the Negro uh, can imitate what he sees and get by on the sea in the ocean just as good as anybody else. But the American man, which is the Indian, right? He is undeviatingly characteristic as that of the Negro. So the Indian, looks just like 
the Negro. Okay? That's what we just read. For whether we see him in an athletic career or the stunted Kama in the dark California or the fair Barora, he is an Indian still and cannot be mistaken for being of any other race. Now here's a sort of a correlation that we should be looking at. The observations of Molina and Humboldt are sometimes quoted in disproof of this pervading uniformity of physical characters. Molina says that the difference between an inhabitant of Chile and a Peruvian is not less than between an Italian and a German, to which Humboldt adds that the American race contains nations whose features differ as essentially from one another as those of the Circassians, Moors, and Persians. But all these people are of one and the same race and readily recognized as such, notwithstanding their differences of features and complexion. And the American nations present a precisely parallel case. Okay, let's move back. It says, it cannot be questioned that physical diversities do occur equally singular and inexplicable as seen in different shades of color, varying from a fair tint to a complexion almost black. Pause. Now, this book was released or published in 1844 by a man that dealt with craniums. Right here it says, I have had opportunity to compare nearly 400 crania derived from tribes inhabiting almost every region of both Americas and have been astonished to find how the preceding characters in greater or lesser degree pervade them all. So he got his information because he's a doctor, a, a well-educated individual, and he has examined the craniums, right? Okay. He said that they have differences especially in color that range from a fair tint to a complexion almost black so if we go over here to this book right here now this book is pub was published in 1671 it's called america being the latest and most accurate description of the new world containing the original of the inhabitants in this book, mind you, if you want the first edition, it's going to cost you 60 grand. But in that book, which is the latest and most accurate description of the New World and containing its inhabitants, right? <clears throat> so here's an image, an engraving from that book of numerous Indians. Over here, you got an Indian with a color of a fair tint and one right here with a complexion almost black same thing over here light skin fair tint complexion almost black back here you got a maybe a caramel color to a light skin with a, another indian with a complexion almost black okay so there were light skinned indians here with different features and complexions before the European invaded. Now, I want to go back over and read something I seen that caught my eye. Said the Negro, who's, and this is back at the Maritime Enterprise, says the Negro, whose observing and imitative powers enable him to acquire with ease the details of seamanship, readily becomes a mariner, but rarely a commander. And history is silent on the nautical prowess of his race. The, and history is silent on the nautical prowess of his race. Nautical is at sea. Prowess is how good he was. He was good at it. They're good at it, of his race. The people that were the best at sea were Africans, the Negro. That's why it says, and history is silent on the nautical prowess of his race. Negro was the tippy top of the sea long ago. A lot of different details in this book. 
but it's important that we understand this very first one right here. Okay, we can even read a little more. It says, thus, it is that the American Indian, from the southern extremity of the continent to the northern limit of his range, is the same exterior man. With somewhat variable stature and complexion, his distinctive features, though variously modified, are never effaced, and he stands isolated from the rest of mankind, identified at a glance in every locality and under every variety of circumstance and even his desiccated remains which have withstood the destroying hand of time preserve the primeval type of his race excepting only when art has interposed to pervert it pause so he's telling you right there that art you know the way they, these people you know draw up the indians and then present the picture to you that's a that's an illusion that's a perverted illusion and that's the only time that uh, the features and complexion of the Indian has been effaced is when it's been perverted through art. So that's what, so a lot of truths in this book. It's once again, it's all about uh, the Aboriginal race. Right? We go right here. It says. It is an adage among travelers that he who has seen one tribe of Indians has seen all. So much do the individuals of this race resemble each other, notwithstanding their immense geographical distribution and those differences of climate which embrace the extremes of heat and cold. The half-clad Fijian, shrinking from his dreary renter, has the same characteristic lineaments, though in an exaggerated degree, as the Indians of the tropical plains, and these again resemble the tribes which inhabit the region west of the Rocky Mountains, those of the great valley of the Mississippi, and those again which skirt the Eskimo on the north. 